Hey guys, so a while back I was uh, stuck on making less than ideal milk for my latte and I felt really frustrated because I had no idea what I was doing wrong. I felt like I was doing everything the same but somehow the milk was just turning out um, poorly. So I asked my friend uh, who's working professionally as a barista and she gave me some pointers on how to, uh, what I'm doing wrong and how to improve uh, my milk. So in this episode, I want to share that with you guys. Alright, so like I said, for a long period of time, uh, a while back, my milk was turning out very airy and just not rich enough uh, to make a proper latte art. So in my, well, in my case, I, I'm just practicing on how to make latte art. Anyway, I thought maybe the obstacles that I was facing and some of the problems that I was trying to overcome might be something that you guys are, are dealing with at home as well. So I want to share my progress and kind of what I did to improve my milk over the past several weeks with you guys today. So before we actually make a cup of latte with the machine, I just want to quickly go over the mistakes that I personally made. First of all, if you are practicing steaming milk at home and you don't want to waste milk, you can actually just add a tiny tiny bit of dishwashing soap to water. It will create a very similar consistency to steamed milk. So this way you can practice your angle and your technique uh, without wasting actual milk. So let's get back to what I was doing wrong. I've been making latte at home for over two years and as time went on, I started to get a better grasp on how much milk I need in my pitcher to 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 make my typical cup of latte. So as a result, I actually end up putting less and less milk in the pitcher. In my mind, I'm, I'm kind of just reducing waste. However, without realizing it, by having not enough milk in the pitcher, the milk does not have enough room to turn and, and rotate. Uh, which is what you know allows air to get incorporated with the milk to create the foam and also the milk will end up reaching its um, target temperature much faster than I anticipated and that actually also allowed less room for uh, for error now if you guys are also having this similar issue at home maybe just adding a bit more milk will, will solve that for you the second mistake that I made was the angle and the position of the steam wand. I was fo purely focusing on having the, the milk kind of rotate on, on the surface as fast as I can. So in my mind, I thought by having the wand all the way to the, to the wall of the pitcher is what will allow it most speed. However, that was actually wrong. So I learned that you should really picture your pitcher into four separate quarters. And where the wand should be is actually in the middle of the lower right quarter. As this will allow more room for the for the steam one to suck in most of the larger bubbles and create a more ideal rotation in the picture. So the next mistake is kind of related to my previous mistake. Because I was picturing the milk going in a circular direction, I was keeping the wand at the surface of the milk. To the eye, it actually looked like the milk was turning in, in, in a good direction. However, I was allowing way too much air to go into the milk. So what you want to do is actually submerge the wand after you have created enough big bubbles on the surface. So that will allow the milk to not just spin on a horizontal, uh, level it will also incorporate up and down within the pitcher as well and with that said let's get some milk into the pitcher and make a cup of latte all right so obviously we're going to start by pouring milk into the pitcher and like i said before if you're not comfortable just yet or if you're practicing, you can always put a tap bit extra and this is going to give us a little bit more room for errors. We are just heating up the espresso machine at the moment. We want to make sure that the espresso machine is fully heated before we start steaming milk. Okay, so we are just about ready. Keep in mind, when you're actually inserting the tip into the pitcher, uh, you're picturing the pitcher into four quarters and you're inserting the tip just about the bottom right quarter. Don't worry about the big the big bubbles, I should say, uh, that form in the beginning of the steaming process. We actually do want those. The steam one is going to suck in those big bubbles and create much smaller refined bubbles that's going to expand the milk. Once the, the milk starts to expand and most of the big bubble is gone, uh, we are going to submerge the wand. As the wand is submerged, you want to just make sure you keep the, the, the pitcher tilted. You want to see the milk start to swirl and it's going to further refine the milk. 
Now we are waiting for the milk to get hot enough. I usually just go by feel. Uh, There's a three second rule. You usually kind of just wait until your hand cannot hold onto the, the pitcher for you know about three seconds and you want to just take it out. And again, don't worry about the big bubbles that's, that's um, still remaining. We're just going to lightly tap the pitcher on the counter and we're going to get, get rid of those bubbles. So now we are ready to pour the milk into the espresso. Uh, what I like to do normally is to just first incorporate a little bit of milk in the espresso. I'm going to swirl it just a little bit. Then I'm going to pour in the rest uh, of the milk to about halfway. Keep a cup tilted. And now you want to keep the, the spout of the pitcher close to the espresso, to the cup and do your heart. It's always good to start practicing with hearts first as that is the foundation for most of the other um, pours. Okay, so I hope one of those pointers are helpful in helping you correct some of your mistakes or if you are just starting out, uh, help you set you on the right path. But another tip is that if you are practicing on your latte pours like I am, start practicing with hearts because hearts are kind of the foundation that will build into more complicated pours. We will have another video out probably next week on more uh, tips on specifically how to do those pours, so keep an eye out for, for that video. I hope this video helped you out as the things that I discussed here really helped me improve my milk over the past two months that I've been implementing it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're having any other issues with your drink at home. As always, remember to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also share it with anyone who might find this to be helpful. So that's it for this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.